Hey everybody, it's uh, Preston at Cactus Pro Films and it's an exciting day because we get to premiere uh, my brother Garrett Randolph's new music video. So uh, before we do so, I wanted to ask Garrett a few questions. Hello everybody, I uh, hope everyone's staying safe during hard times like this. Uh, first, I think we need to give a big shout out to all our healthcare workers, not just in our country but across the world that are doing everything to save lives. Um, all the stalkers that keep the store stock so we can get food, <laughs> toilet paper. Um, they're really the true heroes right now. Uh, back in uh, 2019, August 30th, I released my debut CD called Badlands Concerning Postcards and Portraits of the American Dream. And we are here to talk about track 10, which is Washington. Uh, Garrett, I have a few questions for you about the song. Um, the first one is just about the the seriousness of the song. It's, it seems to be a really personal song. Um, the opioid crisis is an extremely serious and important um, issue in America today. Uh, what, what inspired you to write Washington? So it's no secret, uh, back in 2018, I had to go down to Texas to a rehabilitation center. Uh, I was addicted to opioids and alcohol, and uh, it was about my seventh day in the hospital part of the campus where they administer different drugs to help you come down and help with your symptoms. And about my seventh day in there, uh, there was a girl that checked in and uh, she was addicted to, to opioids, heroin, and meth, uh, the triple whammy. And it was really hard to see and, and she would have been really beautiful if she didn't scratch her skin and stuff. But the first night she was really having a hard time and I went out to the kitchen and showed her around where she could get cereal and muffins and uh, sandwiches, things like that. And we had a nice conversation. Well, she was always smiling. That was the one thing about her. And there wasn't a lot of smiles in the hospital part of that place. And anyways, she started to do better, better and better. And by like two weeks in, she was, uh, we were all checked out of the hospital part, living on the campus. Uh, all of my friends there, we talked and saw her walking around. And But the interesting thing about her, we never knew her name. And Anyway, she came from Washington, uh, Seattle actually, and she always said that this was her fourth time in rehab and she had to do this for her kid, her daughter. And she said she sold everything to get an open-ended ticket down here uh, to Texas and she came and she was doing fantastic. And then about two weeks in, she left all her stuff, just packed a little backpack and bailed in the middle of the night and said she would rather go back to the drug life than be in here. And that always stuck with me. And the next day, everyone was just shocked because we thought she was doing well. She was attending all the classes and then she was just gone. And you can't help but think of her daughter at a time like that too. A daughter without a mother, really a mother without a daughter. And anyways, so the song's called Washington and there's a lyric in there that, uh, and I never knew her name, so I'll just remember her as Washington. And that's kind of how we still talk. My friends from down there, we stay in touch and check in on, on one another. And we still talk about Washington and wonder where she's at. And uh, anyways, one thing I'll show you, which is kind of cool. These are, uh, this was my notebook in there, my songwriting notebook. And uh, this is actually the first draft of the lyrics for Washington. And I wrote it in my room. And the really cool thing is uh, at Community, uh, they'd want me to get up and play a song or any musician that was there, get up and play a song. And I played this one the day after she left. And I wrote this in about 15 minutes. And it was the first time really you could hear a pen drop when I played a song. So I'm really happy that uh, Preston, the music video, you wanted to touch base on how personal this is and really the opioid crisis and epidemic in America. And I believe we lost almost over 30,000 people to an opioid overdose. And, um, you know, you never wanna be a stat. And when you're really close to being a stat, everything gets personal. And I'm, I'm happy that we decided to use Aaron uh, in the music video to really reflect, not so much the addict that was Washington, but just almost her spirit and how, how she moved with grace. And uh, reflecting that with the music angel box that we have, um, I really think it ties the song together really well. And um, I think we need to bring a lot of awareness once we get through this coronavirus. Um, and, and we will, because we're all strong, but we just have to do the right thing. Our leaders have to do the right thing. 
we can get through this and we have a lot of other issues to tackle in our country and uh, the opioid crisis is definitely one of them. So I'm happy, Preston, that you're really kind of reflecting that uh, through this song. I know you have a lot of musical influences, um, people you look up to. Uh, for this song, did uh, anyone's music inspire you? It's funny when you ask, uh, do I have any musical influences when I write the song? Usually I do when I'm writing the song, it's weird. Like if I'm in a super big piano phase, I'm gonna listen to some Jackson Brown. Or, um, you know, I'm finger picking a lot or doing that Chuck, I'm listening to a lot of Neil Young. I can hear certain melodies and stuff because I'm inspired by all those guys. But this song I think was so personal that you didn't even think about it. It just almost wrote itself. I mean, the story was there and I was just the one that put it on paper. And it was so personal that I didn't really even have any other influences in my mind for this song, which is rare for me. I know you've been working a lot with your friend Brian Mandela. Um, you both are starting a band, so can you tell us um, tell us what's going on with that? And um, do you have any upcoming releases? Yeah, I'm glad you have brought up Brian Mandela. He's been my best friend since fifth grade. Uh, we started writing songs together when we went to high school, um, even before we had a guitar. And then we got home one day, and actually it's right here. It's now my Open G Keith Richards guitar, but this was sitting there in my bedroom that uh, you bought for me. And this is the first song that, uh, first song we wrote together, Brian and I, was called Time. And uh, we played it for my mom's boss once, very first performance, but that was on this guitar. And ever since, we started writing songs and found music, you know, we, we didn't go back. And uh, now Brian and I started a, a band together. He actually last year released a CD called Tempt the Devil. Uh, and I collaborated with him on some of the tracks, but it's a it's a great CD, you should go check it out. You can find it on the R&M website, which is uh, pretty cool. We designed our website and we're trying to get everything going, but we are in a band now and we're uh, knee deep in recording our first CD together album. Uh, it's gonna be 14 tracks and it's called American Spirits. Uh, you can look for it uh, probably early May and uh, we're really excited for it. And we hope to get on the road as soon as uh, the, we beat this coronavirus and we can get out playing music and, and bring some entertainment and joy to the people. And that's kind of R&M's goal. Um, anyways, yeah, you go check us out. We're all over Facebook, Instagram. Um, and it's really awesome just being able to make music and write songs with your best friend. All right, man. Well, we will uh, stay tuned. I look forward to the new release of the album. And for everyone watching, um, we're excited to finally premiere the music video for Washington. So uh, here it is, I hope you like it. Save a thousand souls 
but she couldn't save her own. And I never knew a name, and now she is gone. See you again